as you are aware, I have taken a series <coughs> in the morning on a theme called Tess. God tests and the devil tempts. And uh, <coughs> in the morning we were looking at the life of Asa, King Asa. While we are not meditating that life, but looking at how he started as a king and how he ended as a king were contrasting. And this is in Second Chronicles 14, 15 and 16 chapters. You don't have to look it up. And Asa was tested in a couple of areas and we go through those tests in our day-to-day -day lives. And the test that we saw in the Telugu service was a test that comes when it comes to our consecration to God, completely giving ourselves. Asa passed in that test. Whether we passed or not, we need to see. And I dealt the same subject, taking another passage in the evening. The second one is about control. Are we willing to give God complete control of our lives? And we looked at that. <coughs> and we looked at, in the English service, how David consecrated himself and everything that belonged to him. And the most precious was the blessed son, Isaac, on whom the entire promise of God rested. But yet he went about in Genesis 22, don't have to see, to put him on that altar. And the first time the word test came in the Bible was there in Genesis 22, 1. It says, after these things passed, and that's how it happens in our lives, after some things pass by, after we make those baby steps and learn some lessons, hopefully, Tests will only come to people who are learning. And in the light of what you have learned, God will test you so that you get better, so that I get better. My faith grows. After these things have passed, God tested Abraham. And after certain things pass in your life, God will say, let me test you. And Abraham got 100 on 100, or a 10 CGPA, whichever is the scoring system. Because he didn't, with, he didn't withhold to slaughter his son. And then, <clears throat> today morning, we went to another area of test which we didn't complete in the Telugu service. I will take it forward next week. But we will say, take the same theme, because I don't want you to miss. <coughs> While you could go back and log in and listen to that sermon as well. So in the area of consecration, how are you? Have you given your bodies every day as a living sacrifice? In the area of control, does God have full control of your thoughts and your actions? And the third one today, which I dealt in the morning, the same subject I will deal in the evening, but from a different passage, is in the area of my commitment to God. And that is Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 17 says in the New International Version that Asa's heart was fully committed to God all his life. Asa's heart was fully committed to God in his life. And we looked at a couple of things. What does it mean to be committed to God? And we will look at another passage today and see at just one area, the most important area, which relates to the word of God. <clears throat> if I am committed to Christ, then I will be committed to doing what this word says. 
It is as simple and straight. In the morning, I think in the second service, I kind of added something to the sermon that I gave in the first service. It was a thought that came while I was sharing. And I would just want to set that before you and then quickly look at one passage from the epistle of James where this is beautifully written clearly <coughs> when Paul wrote that epistle. <coughs> the question was, or I, I, I give answers to three questions because back in the Middle East, the Jews or those who still follow the Mosaic law are ridiculed by our Muslim friends by giving them a name called Al-Kitab. These are the people of the book. The meaning of Al-Kitab is, Kitab is book in Hindi, right? Yes, no, my Hindi is not all that bad. I know it is, it's not good for sure. The people of the book. Because Abraham generation believed in Yahweh. Right? Which says about one God. And they use it. But I don't take it as a statement to ridicule. I am proud to be called the people of the book. Amen? Are you proud to be called the people of the book? This is the only book that transforms life. Hallelujah. Yes, no? But the point is, we don't believe as much than others who oppose us. If you walk into any school and say, we want to just distribute Bibles freely to all the children, no school door will open, I am telling you. Yes, no? Am I right or wrong? Including the so-called Christian schools, they say, give some moral stories. Why? Why? Because more than us, they believe if this enters, there is going to be transformation. Hallelujah. Right? But we don't. Because it's freely available. The question is, uh, why should you turn to this book? I'll talk about some basics today and then we'll quickly go in. Why should we turn the pages of this wonderful scripture, the Holy Bible? While every religion respects their holy book, we claim that this is not one of such books. Right? They have enough reason to say why you should read their most precious holy book. People from other faiths. Then if the same question is asked to me, Mr. Peter Samuel, why do you want us to turn these pages and read? What is my one-line answer? I cannot give a sermon, no? Nobody has time to listen. And we need to know why we need to turn to this book more than anything else. My simple two-word answer says, when I turn these pages, I'll meet the person who created me. Hallelujah. Clap for the glory of God. I'm sure you. Yes, no? Anybody will meet the person who created them and will also see the power of that person. Amen. That is the difference between this book and any other book. The power of God and the person of God can be seen only when we turn to this book. That is what this is. This transforms life and we have time to watch TV channels. We have time to watch Kabali, Bahubali and everything. And we don't bother about the person who gave the Bali on the cross. Right? There is so much of it. In the Telugu service I said, I want to salute the fans of Rajnikanth. Really. They are crazy. We are neither crazy nor lazy, we are easy. We are, ah, we are easy. Easy Christianity, casual Christianity. I don't want to move out of my comfort zone. 
Rajnikanth fans are crazy. I say, boss, hats off to you. That people flew from Japan to come to Chennai to watch the movie. Wow! There is one auto rickshaw fellow who has taken people freely to the cinema hall. I will not one bring one person to church freely in my car. This is Christianity. Companies have given holidays. Companies have given free tickets. One person, 40 years back, was a ticket collector of a bus and was giving tickets to people, ticket, ticket, ticket. Today everybody wants tickets to his movie. But Jesus Christ gave the ticket to heaven, to eternal life, and nobody wants the ticket, and it's free of cost. Who will talk about this? If not you and me. If he can influence people across the globe, one person, don't you think Jesus Christ influences much more? But the point is, where are they? Where are they? That is what hit me over the weekend when I saw the hype of Kabali. <laughs> Including Bangalore University, MBA exam postponed because by Kabali. I think if we have special cleaning here, church also will be full to watch Kabali. Yeah. But we there don't have time to turn these pages. The second one is, why should I trust? Okay, you, you said, fine, you'll meet the creator. But why should I trust? The reason I say that I trust this is because the author belongs to heaven. Hallelujah. The author is God himself. There is a heavenly author with heavenly authority who gave this 2 Timothy 3rd chapter 16th verse. Don't have to look it up. It is God inspired. God inspired. Then why should we teach this book? Why should we turn to this? Why should we trust and why should we teach? Because this is relevant to anybody. Hallelujah. Yes, no? It is the most relevant. People across different generations have opened this and found it relevant to them. Yes, no? Small kids who go to Sunday school look at the story of David and Goliath and understand we come and listen to a sermon on David and Goliath and we understand it at a different level. They relate to it at a different level. I relate to it at a different level. It is relevant. It is rewarding. Amen. It is relevant and it is rewarding. That is why you read and meditate and go and proclaim. So are you committed? to this world. That is the test we need to face. Am I committed to this world? We will quickly look at James chapter 1 verses 18 or in fact 19 onwards. We received James chapter 1 verse 18. O oh, his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This word brought life to you and me. Yes, no? Brought life. And that is what happens as the beginning. When we understood God's word and when we understood that this is true, and then when we gave our lives in response to what was said here about what God did for you and me and who we are in the light of who he is according to our birth, we were born sinners and when we realized all of this, we received life from this word. Life from this word. 
So since we received life from this word, I'll go one step forward and we will quickly look at four areas of commitment. Commitment to the word. Since we received life through this word, we need to live this life according to this word. Yes, no? That is the basis. There is nothing else. Not based on somebody's sermon. Not based on Peter and her sermon at all. No! That is just one part. You and I are supposed to live according to this word because this is the one that gave me life. And this is the one I will reach out every day to live according to this. And then we see in verse 19, one great man of God said, three beautiful keys of communication. You know, a lot of soft skill trainings happen. One major um, topic in soft skills is communication. Communication. Right? In respect to whatever stage you are in, they will say, you still need to communicate. I didn't understand till now. And here is that verse which is giving us three pointers for communication. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear or quick to hear. That is listening skills, no? In communication, <laughs> right? Bible is telling. Later on, our corporate world is teaching us. That is why I said this is relevant. But we will go to some other communication session. Well, God is telling, I put it in James 1.19. You better read, understand these three important techniques and you will be good in communication. Right? We need to live according to this word. And live according to this word is a life that is controlled by this word. A life that is controlled by this word. And what is that control? It is here. I should be swift to hear. And second is slow to speak. First you listen and then you speak. Because there is power in this tongue. right? And in the same epistle of James, he says, beware of the tongue. It is such a small part, but it's so dangerous. Because the words that we utter from our mouth could heal someone, could hurt someone. Yes, no? Absolutely. And it is so easy to use this left, right and center. They say three things you can't take back. I, I, I am able to remember two thirds, you help me out. One is toothpaste that is squeezed out of the paste. When you press the tube, try to put back the toothpaste. Go home and do tomorrow when you're brushing. It can never go in. The second one is the words that go out of my mouth. I cannot take it back. Third, I don't know. But there was something else. That's not important. But the point is, <coughs> when I received life from this word, I am supposed to live this very life according to this word. And living by the word is living under the control of God's word. Be swift to hear. Matthew 4.4 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Right? That is what Jesus told. Be swift or quick to hear and be slow to speak. And third is, be slow to anger or wrath. Be slow to anger. So James is dealing with the issue of attentiveness. We need to be attentive when God wants to speak to us. And when we are turning this word, God is talking to us. And you and I are supposed to be attentive. Be quick to hear. And slow to speak and take out anger. The issue of anger was dealt. 
And then if you go to verse 20 of James chapter 1, verse 20, and we'll quickly go and see in the limited time that we have. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So take care of your anger. Be careful. And then verse 21 says, Therefore lay aside. So a life that, be, that is being lived according to this living word, I received life, life eternal, a new life, because I trusted in what was written here. And now that I have received that life, I am living that life according to this word. And when I'm saying I'm going to live my life according to this word, I'm saying, Lord, I want your word to control me. I want your word to clean me. Yes, no? Are you with me? I want your word to clean and cleanse me. And this is the best cleaning agent, but we don't want to use. Cleans us thoroughly, provided you just do what it says. And then comes the main thing. So here it says, therefore lay aside filthiness and the overflow of wickedness in another translation which says, get rid of all filth and evil and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. God's word. Now James, Paul writes to James and he sets all of this and now he gets into the next. He says, now that you understood how you got saved and what you need to do, now he says, let us get to the main issue. How this life has to be led. We live According to this word, I'm repeating over and over again so that it registers in your mind. I have to live by this word. That means I am controlled by it. I am cleaned by it. And the third one which we will meditate, which is part of the morning's theme that I have taken is, I will be committed to this. End of the day, it is all about And commitment is 100%. There's nothing less than that. I will be committed to God's word. And that is what is verses 22 to the end of that chapter, that is verse 27. It is all about action. After Paul talks, after um, he says that, after James says that um, um, it is about attentiveness, and then second James says that it is about your anger, and third, it is about your attitude, that you need to set right and get things done. You need to remove evil out of your life, wickedness, filth out of your life, and, and turn to that word that is, that is kept in you. Then he says in verse 22, verse 22, but be doers of the word, not hearers, deceiving yourselves. The main issue is about acting now. We should live a life that is committed to what this word says. So I'll quickly tell you four areas of commitment or four dimensions of commitment or four dimensions of a real relationship with God or four dimensions about are you really committed to God and so on and so forth under the umbrella of the test of commitment. Am I committed to God or not? If I am committed to God, then I am a doer of his word, not just a hearer of his word. A hen and a pig were walking, I believe, and they came to the door of a church and they saw a board. This is just a small joke, okay? They saw a board and it was written, help needed. So the hen and the pig looked at each other. And the hen said, we can give some help to this church. And the pig looked at the hen and said, what can we give? That church has the habit of serving breakfast. Here we don't serve breakfast, huh? don't ask me. 
So they said, uh, next Sunday, I can give eggs for breakfast and you can give ham. Some people understood. Eggs can come while the hen is alive. Ham will come only when the pig is dead. So that is the meat of that animal. So the pig looked at the hen and said, giving egg is contribution, giving ham is commitment. Go back and think. Are you contributing or are you committed? It is easy to contribute something. I'll give half an hour in the two hours of service. I will give one Sunday in that few. That doesn't take us anywhere. God is not interested in contribution. God is interested in your commitment to him. Live a life that is controlled by this world. Live a life that is cleansed by this world. Live a life that is committed to this world. Be doers of the world. So the four dimensions that we will look quickly in the next 10-15 minutes and with that we close. The four dimensions. What is a dimension? I looked at all dictionary meanings and all. Went back to my basics of elementary high school. There's a nice definition in the dictionary. It said, dimension is a measurable degree or a limit to which anything is extended. Measurable degree to which anything is extended is dimension. So we will look at four dimensions, 4D, of commitment. And put marks against each of this after you go home. Where is your level of commitment to God? And will you take a real-time commitment today saying that, yes, Lord, you gave your everything to me and this is because of all that you've done for me. You love me, love me like anybody else. Lord, I want to keep you first. I want to honor your word. I will abide by what your word says. I will live according to your word. The Korean revealed word of God, the complete revelation of God is in this book. The first dimension is the height. Right? Height. So in our spiritual life, when it comes to commitment to God, how can I look at this dimension? What can I relate to it? I'll give you a, one, one word for each of these. How is my commitment to God or how is my commitment in my Christian walk when it comes to my desire for God? So, the dimension height, we will say, is my desire to God. That is one dimension that you and I are measuring ourselves with. What is the dimension? A measurable degree to which anything can be extended. So, I am extending my desire and measuring it and telling when it comes to my desire for God where is that in the scale of 1 to 10, 1 to 20, 1 to 100 I don't know where is it when it comes when Jesus was speaking in John chapter 6 he spoke a lot of things he fed the 5000 and after which people started coming behind him and then in verse 32 of John chapter 6 this is what he says. He says, John chapter 6, verse 32 onwards. If we can pull it up, yes. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, Give us this bread always. And he says, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. And you and I, if we have to measure our height, that is our desire about God, it is a simple question of, am I really hungry for him? Yes, no? 
am i really hunger those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied hebrews 11:6 says without faith it is impossible to please god and he who comes to god should know that that he is and he is the rewarder of those who seek him diligently he is a rewarder of those who seek him diligently that is desire diligently means till i find i keep searching i keep searching desire is not that i believe that god exists you know james 1 on james 2:19 says you believe there is one god you do well even the demons believe and tremble so don't be excited saying that i believe in god even devils also believe we don't tremble they tremble we only believe and go back yeah you believe that there is one god you do well even the devils believe and they tremble believe in in god is just a beginning it is not enough it is surrendering to him god is not happy every day morning you telling lord i know you are there i believe in you god yes lord you are my god he wants to have an intimate relationship that is what he is interested in for which you need to have a burning desire you need to have that burning desire in in peter first peter 2 22 it says no as as newborn babes desire the milk of that pure word as newborn babes as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby if a babe who is an was a nurse, nursing child if he or she keeps asking milk every 2 hours 3 hours will parents look as surprised what is drinking so much of milk no no we will we we'll, will be more than happy are you with me right i mean we know that for a babe it is natural right but after 25 years also my son wants a bottle and he is holding this and going around i will be the most excited father no right where is that desire do we have to remind that you need to read the word of god do we have to remind you have to please come to church on time participate no you better check whether you are born again or not if you are born again if you are a new born babe a new born babe wants a lot of milk why that you may good evening this is how i am in the sunday morning evening i am saying little sober down no <laughs> so you might be seeing another side of this pastor so that you may grow have you not heard small children you know saying when when i become like you yes no because they, they are this much but they think i want to become big they know after becoming big what will happen they don't know that's the problem right i mean there is a are you getting the point why i am telling all of this is there is a natural desire for somebody who is born again to grow then why is it not happening in the spiritual side that is my question why is it not happening why do you want to still still be like a baby and you know keep keep sucking even after 20 years of born again life if you are born again there is something wrong then in your commitment when it came to that height that the dimension of desire you are zero there is no desire you are lost the second one i don't have time to so this is what is desire all about and and when and then as we grow this very word will become solid meat right for babes it is milk for spiritual adults this is meat and god is telling i want that kind of commitment the second dimension is width right there's another dimension of measurement width it is in my area of dedication 
when it comes to me being devoted to him, how is my measurement there? There is a link from one to the other. If I have desire, just let's listen to me carefully. If I have genuine desire for God, that desire will lead to dedication. Without desire, you will not be dedicated. Absolutely. The more I long for him, the more I want to be dedicated to him. And what leads to dedication? Psalm 51 verse 17, a broken heart and a broken spirit, a broken spirit and a contrite heart is what God looks at. And that is what is dedication all about. To be fully devoted to him. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. When you have that longing towards who he is and come to him for all that he is, then that will lead to dedication. And the third dimension, height, width, tell the third one, no, please, depth. This is basic elementary, I think, no? Elementary school. The depth. What area is this? When it comes to my commitment with God, when it comes to a committed Christian walk, when I am supposed to be the doer of the word, a life that is controlled by the word of God, a life that is controlled by the word of God, a life that is cleansed by the word of God, a life that is committed to the word of God. And if my life is committed to the word of God, I will have a lot more desire. If my life is committed to the word of God, I will have a lot more dedication. If my life is committed to the word of God, I will have discipline. That is depth. Discipline. What is discipline? Training to act in accordance with the rules. Dictionary meaning. Discipline is training to act according to the rules. That is the dictionary definition. You can just add God's rules for our spiritual discipline. Yes, no? I train myself to live according to the rules of God. That is what is discipline all about. We don't have time. There are four types of discipline in the Bible. One of them I'll just touch upon and go to the fourth and with that we close. One of them is called self-control. Self-control is a discipline. It is a fruit of the Spirit also. If you go to 1 Corinthians 9, chapter 27th verse, Paul says, you know, that I want to discipline my body. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, please. Yes. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. This verse scares me, I am telling you. Because it hits me directly. Because I am, I am not equating myself to Paul. Nobody can ever do that. But in a very small fraction of what I do. I keep teaching so much and sharing so many places. And if I don't subject myself to spiritual discipline, I will be disqualified. And I told you, know, the greatest pain is not losing a race. The greatest pain is being disqualified in a race. Disqualified. And in our spiritual race, having run everything, I go up there and God says, My dear friend, you were running in the wrong lane. <laughs> you are disqualified. I am telling you, it is all lost. That is the biggest pain. And that is what Paul is telling. I don't want to be disqualified 
That is why I want to get deeper. That is why he says, I need self-control. Self-control. Somebody said self-control creates character. It is disciplining my desires, it is disciplining my actions, it is disciplining my habits. All of this fall under the category of self-control and so many other things. And which is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. So living a life that is committed to the Word of God. I don't know where our grades are in the self-examination. The height resembles our desire. The width resembles our dedication. The depth resembles our discipline and time or length. Time, the measurement of time is about our durability. Durability. Are you getting the point? The test of durability. Because we, please remember one last thing and then tight I close. Before we gave our lives to the Lord, we were in the broad road. Right? The broad way. But when we gave our lives to the Lord, we came to the narrow way. And there are struggles. In this world you have trials. But be of cheer, of good courage, for I have overcome the world. That is what he said. In this world you will have problems. That is what he said. Because you are living against the values of this world. The value system of this world. You have made a choice to stand apart. And that is going to lead you into problems, into me, into problems. And that is where durability comes. Endurance, right? And that is what products are tested for. They go through the highest level of endurance test. And with this kind of heat, still, this, whatever, a glass or a vessel or a bowl, will go through that quality check. Vehicles go through quality checks. They keep advertising, you know, oh, see Mahindra XUV has gone to the Himalayas, it went in the, finally, somewhere in this lane it will stop, that's a different story. But I mean, <laughs> but I mean it's all of the saying that this, this vehicle has gone through all kinds of extreme places. And they say, because of which you need to buy it. So when it comes to the measure of time, Am I really willing to endure? And that is what James 1.12 is all about. James 1.12 says, and with that we are closing. James 1.12, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of, li of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. He wants to give you the crown of life. All of these, all of these, that is our desire, I'm summing up for you, all of these, that is our desire, our dedication, our discipline, and our durability are evidence to whether we are committed or not. As simple as that. These are evidence. That are you a committed Christian? And in these four dimensions, when we measure ourselves, where are we falling short? God's word is warning us and saying, if we go back, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, James 1.22, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. We have not meditated that, but a beautiful example. Everybody looks into a mirror and ensures that he or she is totally fine. Yes, no? Nobody goes and says, uh, and, uh, 
Sometimes we have to pull the person out of the mirror, saying that it's enough. I'm telling you, you're looking good. Come. I don't know. But when it comes to this, no. This I just walk in. Without opening this for one week, I just walk in and say, Lord, speak to me. I know. What do you know? You don't know anything about him, neither you don't know anything about you. We cannot be casual, easygoing Christians. There are different people who are crazy about so many things. Kabali craze is one craze. They are crazy about cricket, they are crazy about kabaddi, they are crazy about so many other things. And they just do what they feel good about it. But why can't you and I be really crazy for our Lord? When he gave us everything to us, and he said, Lord, yes, I want to be committed to you. I don't want to fail in this test. Let's bow our heads in prayer for the word that he gave. And just look at ourselves in those four dimensions. The height, the width, the depth, and the time, the length. Just utter a small prayer and say, Lord, I can clearly see where I am. I probably have been slightly casual, but easy going, not focusing on my prayer life, not focusing when it comes to spending time with you, reading your word, my quiet time. I am so busy doing my stuff and complaining, saying that I don't have time. I want to grow. I want to have that real, genuine desire. And take that commitment to truly read his word with a genuine desire as you naturally hunger and thirst for your physical hunger and thirst. There should be a natural hunger and thirst for my spiritual life. That means to say you are healthy. If you are not having that natural hunger, look at that areas where there is sin and ask God to forgive you so that you become healthy again and start having more of his word. Loving God, we thank you we praise you for the word that you give us always, which nurtures our very soul. We are just amazed, O oh God, how your word comes alive. And it can only happen with you and nobody else, God. We just thank you all over again. I'm sure, O oh Master, these words have touched many hearts. May they respond without delay and start doing what they have not done till now and to do it continuously, consciously. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.